So hello and welcome to part three of the tutorial so far. So just one quick thing with the code. I added something called uh, lerp, which basically will mean that you don't immediately follow. It's like smoothly moves up. You can put a speed. However, as you can see, I don't really like it, but I will show you the code anyway, so you can understand how you might use such a thing. So um, it's there. So that's our desired position we want to go to. And lerp will, you know, essentially, the further we get away from the object, the faster it will go, and the closer we get, the slower it will go. So based on the speed. So the speed will also affect the distance we go away before we start to sort of lock our distance. So if you look here, if I press play and put speed down to one, then we'll actually end up quite far away before, you know, we meet our max distance. And then when I let go, it'll come up. And slow down now this can be really good but it doesn't really look very good in a, in a third person because as i'm rotating it's looking pretty awful that you'll see here it's all right with the forward but as you rotate you sort of lose that feel of being able to understand where you're facing um and because the position affects rotation because as you rotate the position needs to move it kind of comes off a bit weird so i'll leave it i left it in there to show uh, everyone um, what to do with lerp and i could do that later but i'm just going to take it out and put it um uh, i might leave it there like that so in case anyone sees the code they can do it but i'm just going to set it to temp and then it will go back to where it was before the only other slight thing i changed here was that i uh, extra uh, extracted this formula out to do them as separate things because if you notice in the last one i was doing a minus and a, on a minus so i was minusing the distance above now the reason i'm doing a minus for the behind is because we want to go back but above i want to go up so it felt weird doing a minus with a minus so i just took it out to do a plus so this is adding the distance above because that's the distance above and this is taking away because it's the distance behind um, actually, I will remove that because it will just get weird later. So I'm just back where I was. It does everything. You don't have to make that change. Um, it does everything it did before. I just wanted to show you because that would be the first thing I was going to show. But it didn't really look nice. Um, and then we're just back to this. Uh, maybe one with a really high speed might look good, actually. I don't know. I could could try it, but I'm not going to bother now. But maybe one with sort of like nine or something like that so that you just very slightly move back. Um, I don't know, but I'm going to leave it because, you know, it's pointless now. So what I'm going to do now, obviously, is I'm going to uh, create something to collect. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to show you how to access different scripts. So I'm going to get some random thing off of the asset store, like a coin or a power up, any old model. I'm really going to spend very little time doing it. So I'm going to go and search for that now. Right. So I found this energy cells thing. So I'm going to use that as my collectible. It's going to be like a power up. Um, that's going to make me speed up for a short amount of time, um, whatever. Add to my assets, accept. Ah, oh, yes, there we go. Open in Unity, I'll just do that. There we go. Download and import it again. This won't take long, so I can just do it. Import it all. I don't want all of them, but I don't really care. Right, so I'll go to my assets, energy, type 1, energy cell, prefab and drag in an energy cell. Oh, look at that, that looks perfect. Let's set it at zero, 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 and then we're gonna move it there. So it's right in front of us, so we can't miss it. That's, I'm gonna duplicate, actually I'm gonna scale it up so that it's um, a bit bigger. And put it up in the air slightly, not that high. There, because we're in the air. Let's have a look at the um, game. Let's have a look at the in-game, so I could just double check what it looks like. Okay, it's probably it's behind me. There we go. And we're going to run through it. Nice height. Yeah, that looks perfect to be collected by me. So there we go. Lovely. I'm going to collect that and it's going to make me speed up. Okay, so collecting things. Um, first of all, you basically need to um, have a collider. Now, when you import a 3D model, it'll come sometimes with a mesh collider. So if we go to our drone, you can see it's got a mesh collider. Uh, this one hasn't got a collider, so it's good. So if it's got a mesh collider, that means it's actually got a mesh. That's the collider there. You can see that green thing there is the collider. It's quite accurate. It's probably too accurate for this. So in theory, it's badly optimized, but we'll let that go. Um, so yeah, so there we go. That's the collider there. So we're going to need to add one to the energy cell because it doesn't have one, which is a good, good example. And it's a cylinder. And by luck, there is a cylinder collider. Well, it's called a capsule collider, but it's basically a cylinder. 
So capsule collider, you put it on it. Now it's going to resize it to a good size. And as you'll know, that is a pretty much perfect collider. There it is. I can actually, if I click edit, I can show you how to move the collider. I'm going to undo that, obviously, and put it back. It will pretty much do it for you if it's the right shape. And look at that, pretty much perfect. And that's got a collider on it. Right, so if we want to do collisions with something, we have to have a rigid body. A rigid body, basically, so you have to have a collider and a rigid body on one of the things that you want to check hitting anything. Okay, just have to have one of them. A rigid body basically says we're going to use the physics inside Unity. Now, we're not going to use the physics, and if I play it, you'll see what happens to me if I do play it. I will immediately drop to the floor and roll around. And I would, if I try and move and wiggle, it you know, would roll and, and do other things um, and do etc, etc. Okay, and if I applied the physics to... If I put a rigid body onto the uh, energy cell, then you'll see that we both drop to the floor and I can smack into it and it will send me places. Boom. But the camera's, because I'm spinning now, so actually if I go to the drone, you can constraint freeze position Y, freeze rotation Z, I think is what we want to freeze. I'm guessing there are people honest. Probably the wrong one. So I'm freezing my height so the height doesn't get changed. Oh, no, it's not frozen the, the, the right one. What one's spinning? They're all spinning. Everyone's spinning. Freeze rotation, freeze rotation. Let's freeze all the rotations, actually. That would make sense. Why do I not do that? Um, there we go. Bang. I'm knocking into that. Knocked it over. That was rubbish. Uh, let's not freeze the Y and we'll drop to the floor and I'll bang it a bit better. Um, but you can see that's what a rigid body does. It will start to use the physics. Engine, you know, bang, whatever. That's not acting quite how you expect because I'm I'm using two types of movement. I really should you shouldn't with a rigid body if you're using it as um, a proper rigid body like we're doing at the moment. You shouldn't really alter the uh, local position yourself. You should let the physics engine do that, and you will do that by adding a force and all that sort of stuff. It messes with the physics a bit. It's not a good idea to mix the two systems. Um, so anyway, enough of me knocking this around as fun as this uh, is. Um, and it's more fun than you think. I'm going to turn that off and take it off. Now, I'm going to make it kinematic. Kin oh, kinematic. And now what that means is that I don't follow the physics. I made the wrong thing, kinematic there. I meant to make that kinematic as well. well I, don't, I don't even need a rigid body on the other one, but, um, um, but there we go. So now we don't slide. Kinematic means like don't. Is it like um, is this collider meant just to check for hits as opposed to checking for like like actual like part of gameplay movement like a rock? So um, don't actually need the rigid body on the drone, but um, it's fine uh, to do that anyway. So I'm just gonna oh sorry, I'm gonna so I'm going to take it off, not the drone, I mean the energy cell. So I'm going to take it off the energy cell, the rigid body, don't need the rigid body. And I'm going to make the collider, a, yeah, I can, there's a two things, there's a trigger and a collider. A trigger is just like you could, so like an area, normally it's used for like an area, you'd walk into an area and that'd be a trigger, walk through an empty door or something like that and you trigger something. A collider means you've actually touched something. In the, They're mainly useful if you're actually properly using the rigid bodies. But as we're not, it doesn't really make too much of a difference with us. So I'm just going to leave it as on collision. Um, but anyway, so there we go. So now we're going to get the drone to collide with the um, coins. And we're going to make a new script because we don't, the, the energy cells, because we don't want to do that. Before we do that, though, I'm going to teach you about tags, actually. And a tag is a name of something. So if you've got like a type of object, when you collide with it, you can check the tag and see what you've collided with. So we're going to create a tag called energy cell one word okay then we've got to go back to it set that tag energy cell now when we collide with something we can see what the tag is and if it's energy cell you know we'll deal with it differently not important so much at the moment but because we could only got one thing to collide with but you know still there we go right okay so now we should go to our player scripts folder here and create a player collect script player collect Click on it, right there it is. Right, I'm going to put it on the drone. Right now, so now it's time to talk about some of the nuances of Unity a bit with collisions. So 
The thing is, there are two types of sort of collisions. I keep saying collisions, but there are two types of ways of detecting things that hit each other. There's a trigger and a collider. A collider is normally used when you're using the physics and you want something to happen, like something's whacked into you and you go flying off. A trigger is normally used when you want to run over something and collect it, or, or if you want to go into an area or something else, but you can combine the two um, and, and various other things. Now, we, we want to use a trigger because we don't want to run into this capsule and it move away, actually collide with it or do anything clever like that. And we don't want to use the physics system. So to because we have to have a rigid body, if we put is kinematic on, then we're basically saying we're using the rigid body, but we're not going to use the physics engine. Okay, so we put is kinematic on, and if you don't do that, you'll drop to the floor. Um, but just put is kinematic on, and then it's basically saying we're going to use the physics, but only really for collision detection. But we're going to use triggers, right? It's key here. So, um, so no, so we do that, okay? And then you might think is trigger. That's about you being hit. You don't have to worry about that. It's not you being set to a trigger that matters. It's the thing you're touching. So you need to make sure that the capsule collider on the capsule is a trigger because we're going to detect a trigger event, not a collision event, okay? A collision event it would be if this was properly using the physics and we whacked into it and it moved or something like that. If you want to like run through it, if you have these with collision on and put all the physics in, you can still make them die, but as you hit them, it will sort of like, it will notice you've hit something before it dies and it will slow you down a little bit and be weird. So if you just want to collect something, you do it as a trigger. If you want to work out whether you've rammed into a wall, how hard you've rammed into it for damage, then you do some sort of collision. But there are various other places to use that. Don't take what I'm saying as completely 100%. There are various reasons to pick them. But right now we're going to do a trigger. So we're going to put a trigger on the capsule collider, right? So we've got a capsule collider trigger. We've got no rigid body on that. All we've got is a capsule collider with a trigger set. On the drone, you must have a rigid body set to kinematic. And then that's it. And then the script. Does it, you don't have to set this to trigger. This is about if something was going to try and collect you. But don't worry about that. That's not going to happen. But then we go to our player controller. Now I'm going to delete all these because you don't need them. All right? The space as my tab is still broken. So we're going to do trigger. Type trigger like this, and it will say on trigger enter. That means we've gone in because you've got an enter, a stay, and an exit. Enter will trigger once. You go into the, the area of the capsule collider. Exit will do it when you leave, and stay will continuously do it while you're in there, of course. Now, we're going to kill the thing immediately, so it's not really a big problem. Anyway, so trigger enter. Hit enter, it does this. So it's, it's, gonna, it's an event that happens when you go into a trigger. Right? So we're going to say if other. Now, other is the object that we've just rammed into, the collider, actually, that we just rammed into. It's the actual collider. So we do dot, and then that's the tag of this game object, dot tag. If that's equal to uh, energy, I can't remember what I called it. So bad. Energy cell. And it's so annoying not having alt tab. Energy cell. So that means we've touched our energy cell. So it's, 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 oh, it's, a, it's a trigger that's on that object. Okay. If you had lots of different colliders on there, this would be fine. You could have more colliders. Uh, if the object was strange shaped and you didn't want to use a mesh, because that might be a bit too power hungry, and you really do want to avoid using meshes, collision detection will really slow down programs with lots of objects. So you want to try and keep your collisions real simple, like lots of simple shapes. You'd be surprised how little it really matters. Also, you can make quite a few sphere colliders into things like that. You know, it's perfectly fine. So that sphere colliders are quite quick. Mesh colliders, very, very slow, right, comparatively to a box or sphere. I mean, box collider, basically, you've got to do like, a very simple, if it's less than this, greater than this thing. It's very easy to check if something is inside a cube uh, and even a sphere, but like uh, an actual mesh with different shapes is very complicated math comparatively. Right, so if it's inside the cell, first thing we're just gonna do is print it cell, just to, to always do that, and then you can delete that after. Um, I mean, I could run that and test it, but I'm not gonna bother. So I'm just gonna do destroy, which is what you do to, um, uh, yeah, destroy other, dot game object because that is the actual object that that collider is on now, if you just did destroy other it would just destroy the collider the actual collider will be removed out of the object so you want to do destroy other dot game object because that is the game object attached to the collider okay so hopefully you get that if the tag's correct we're going to print play hit we're going to destroy it let's save that 
Fingers crossed this works. I'll be honest with you, I nearly always mess something up with colliders and triggers. Nearly always, always. There's always a box I forgot to tick. So if this works, I'll be actually amazed that I've managed to do it. Oh my God, I actually did. I'm actually shocked that I got that right the first time. Um, because nearly always I spend 25 minutes thinking, what have I not ticked? But there we go. So obviously we collected it. Let's just show that again. Obviously it's not very exciting. We didn't have anything happen when we collected it. Just disappeared. But we could have some sort of explosion noise etc we could play a sound actually i could do the sound um i suppose as part of this uh maybe i'll do sound yeah i'll do some sound as part of this one because obviously it's a key thing but let's for, let's um first of all let's just get the player that thing to do something because right now it's doing absolutely nothing so we go back here i'm going to remove the print i like to remove them straight away or i end up forgetting them um right now so what we want to do is we want to we want to um increase the player speed that's what i'm going to do in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to going to let the player know that there's been a speed up collection so i'm going to go to the player movement because this is to do with the movement i'm just going to minimize the update for now because i don't need to do that i'm going to go up here and i'm going to create a method which is public because it will need to be it's going to return nothing and it's going to say that um speed pickup collected Right, so this is the first thing I'm going to do. Right, now, I'm then going to go up here because we're going to need a default speed. Serialized field. Actually, it doesn't need to be serialized field because we're not going to edit it in um, Unity. This is the private, original speed. Okay. And in the start, I'm going to set original speed. I should have put float there to player speed. Now, the reason for this is because after we... Um, I want to speed up for a certain amount of time and then I want it to go back to the original speed. And they are thinking just set it to 10 or set it there. But don't forget, we could have changed it in Unity. So as soon as the game starts or the object is created, it's going to take a copy of whatever player speed is. I'm not going to worry about turn speed. Um, and then I'm going to do this. So if we pick up the speed collected, I'm just going to I'm just going to show you the first thing of just like speeding it up. So I'm going to do player speed. I'm just going to double the speed times equals two right which doubles it in case you didn't know that you can do times equals you can do plus equals um that, that is the same as no, basically that's the same same player speed equals player speed times two so now how do i get that to be called by the other object now this is actually tricky i find a lot of people struggle with this online so essentially what i want to be able to do is in here i want to be able to access the player movement class so i make a player movement class in here called like player movement. The general rule is that's a good idea is to do the uh, lowercase version of it. So I'm going to call it a serialized field. It's going to be private or private as I wrote. There we go and press save. Now you might think, does that access that? No, that doesn't do that. That means I now have a slot in Unity to drag it in. So I'm just going to go through that quickly again. So I think I've, I've rushed through it. So I've just created a public method of the class player movement that's going to double the speed forever ignore the original speed bit for now that's just prepping for in a minute and we're going to get this to run it so first we do this right then if we go back here and we go to drone and we go to here you'll see i've got a little slot now it says none in there but i can drag that onto there and now i in this script i can access anything that's public in this script so i go back here and here I go player movement dot and you'll see that I'll have I scroll down and I've done it right, which is also a flaw. What did I call it? Oh, I'm so stupid, I need to remember my name things. What did I call it? Um speed pickup collected. Right, go back. Dot S. There you go, speed pickup collected, it takes no parameters. There you go. So now we're gonna collect a, uh, um an item and run it in there. Now you will see online. That's why these people online, they always do everything in one controller to stop all this happening. But trust me, what would happen is eventually this would just get massive and massive and massive and annoying. So having it set up directly is the proper way of doing it and talking back and forth through scripts like this is the proper way. There is another way to get access to that where you can actually make it find it on the start. You can actually get it to find that, but I don't think that's a good idea. Well, it's not, not a bad idea, but it just it does actually add some time of execution, which you don't actually need if you set it up correctly. But anyway, 
So now we're going to run the player movement script in there. Um, let's go into Unity Actual and play it, and you will see that it works correctly. I should instantly double speed. Let's just get a good run up, and then you'll see I speed up. There you go. Uh, you can see my speed is 20 over here. Um, and that's works correctly. There we go. However, I did say I wanted it to, to only last a short amount of time. So this script gets executed. Um, and I might show you. So can I just show you? Let's just go here. Uh, I want to see if just to, I should have really done a test. Um, because there can be a slight problem with what we're doing there. And I'm going to show you what it is. Um, I wonder if it will do it. No, I only printed it once. Um, it can, the destroy event doesn't always happen immediately. Okay. So there is a chance sometimes that this will, you know, you, you can sometimes, um, if you're doing other ones like on trigger and other things, just be careful because destroy object doesn't always trigger 100% quickly. If anything's ever happening and, and it's going off twice, what I tend to do is do the other dot tag equals nothing. So I'm setting the tag of the other one to nothing. So once I've tagged it as nothing, if I do collide with it again or something, because you might have a way where you sort of go, doo -doo -doo, touch it really quickly, not twice. Um, like you, you could have a wing of your ship that flicks it and then another bit flicks it and you could get two collisions really quickly. I know we're destroying it, but that's not always what you're going to do, is it? You're not always going to destroy it. Um, so uh, if you ever want to do something like that, you could, do it, you could set the tag to other or, or have something in the object. You could have a delay. But anyway, it's not right about that for now. So go to player movement, speed pickup collected. Now, what I want to then do, I'm going to make a private method, which is going to return, uh, uh, set default speed. I'm going to set the speed back to, um, to whatever the speed was. So we'll do that. Why did I just copy equals? And that. But we're going to set it back to the original speed. Uh, and then we will. Actually, I'll, I'll do that. Do you know what I'll do? I'll do a good thing. I'll put a float in here of, uh, oh, this is going to be good. I'll actually do this. That's just good. I'll, I'll, no, I'll do one, and then I'll show you the others after because I'm getting too um, ahead of myself. So, right, so let's set that back to you. So how do we get this to do this? Right, well, what we do is we do invoke. Invoke allows you, but you have to pull the, um, really weirdly, I think, uh, I never really understood why, but you put a string of the method name. I don't really know why. It doesn't just let you type the name. I suppose it's because, yeah. Anyway, and the time you want. And what Invoke does, it will set this method to go off after a certain amount of time. So let's say five seconds. So we're going to get five seconds of speed up. Okay. Then we run. Right, so let's, let's see. Speed up. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Back down to 10. Pretty close counting. There you go. So we've got speed up for a few seconds. Maybe we should put more of these bloody uh, things out there. Really, yeah. Um, D and then whack one over here. Oh no, don't touch that one. Uh, there we go. But anyway, there's some ones out there. But anyway, now this is a good. Oh, I should have done that before. That's no, okay. So this is going to be a good example, actually, of what I'll do. So I'll put these there. By the way, sometimes I create an empty object and just put lines in like this just to separate things up. But I do that a lot. Um, you can disable the object so it doesn't actually uh, have anything in the game. So it's not relevant. In and uh, I do that all the time to my mom. But annoyingly, when you play the game, it rejiggers all these. So it really annoys me. Oh, it doesn't now. Sometimes it does. It'll move things around. Um, anyway, especially if you've got things that get created. So anyway, I'll just put the light up there. Sometimes I do it with things like lights and cameras go up there and the plane goes up there and then the energy cells and the drone. So anyway, so what I want to do is I want to have it so these pickups do different things. Like one will, uh, I don't mean different things in, they do different things. I mean, they give me different, a bit like speed. One's going to times my speed by 10 for five seconds, one by two for five or whatever the, the time is. So I'm going to give each drone that um, thing to collect uh, a script. So let's do a script. We'll do collectible. Um, do a folder collectible, and we'll call it energy cell. Energy cell. Right. Now I'm going to delete the other two energy cells for now because otherwise I'm going to have to um, copy everything over. 
I could make it something called a prefab, but we'll talk about that later. So anyway, so I put an anti-cell script on there and that's going to have two private, I could make this public to be fair. Um, serialized field, but I'll make them private to be a good little coder. Private, um, speed boot, the float, uh, speed multiplier. And I'll set that to default of two. And then I'm going to have um, upgrade time. And we'll set that to five by default. Okay, so I now, this is going to show you how to get access to scripts in code. Like if you, because you can't drag these in because you won't know which one it is. So you, before we could drag that script in on the player movement and the player collect because it's always, there's only one of them. It's always that one. But here we need to access some data from a script, but we need to get access to it at, on the fly, do you know what I mean? So um, anyway, so when the player collect collides with the object, it needs to be able to send the speed and the pickups are there. So we're going to add a float, which is going to be of the uh, speed. I call them the same thing. Multiplier, comma, upgrade time. I think that's what I called them. I need to add those in. And then I'm going to copy them over that. Now, before we, uh, we're going to cancel invoke as well first, um, because if we pick up two power ups, there's a chance that it cancels them in the middle of each other. So as you pick up a new one, you, the other one's gone. Like, let's get the new one and the other one disappeared. But if I didn't do that cancel invoke, I could pick up one that had two seconds, pick up one immediately that had 10 seconds. But the two second default uh, thing would still trigger. So I'm going to cancel the invokes before I restart another invoke. So all I'm doing here is giving this speed pickup that I run from here the ability to be sent values. So we'll just send two and five for now. So we're back to roughly what we were before. Multiplier and time. But we really want to get those from the energy cell that we touch because we're going to give each energy cell a different uh, ability to have that. If we look at the energy cell now, it's got a speed multiply. Let's put 20 and let's do five seconds or something. Actually, no, let's do 10 because 20 might be too much. And then we'll do three seconds. So this one could be 20 and three. But this one here could be two, four, five. And the whole point is that when we touch it, we're going to read from it these values and use them. All right? There we go. 25, two, and three. Brilliant. Um, so let's go back here. So how do we get that? Right, well, this is actually a little tricky. So it looks super strange, right? But there we go. I'm going to just have to show you it. You kind of have to just learn it. Like, it doesn't really make a hell of a lot of sense, this. It's a little bit weird. Lots of people online struggle with this. We need to get access to that script like we did with um, that player control uh, there, like that. But we dragged that in. The way to do it in code is like this, and it is a bit weird. So... Energy cell, energy cell, do lowercase, so same as before, equals, and now I've got to get one, and I get it from this game object, and it's so weird, you've got to do this, and you do dot, get component, there we go, and that's basically how you do it. That's saying, get us access to that script, from that game object, and big components, by the way, are these things here. Like when you select on the drone, these are all called components. So it's saying, get the component called energy cell. Okay, you just kind of have to learn that like a robot. If you want to access another script or, or another object and you want to touch something, you've got to do that. That's how you do it. Um, anyway, so now I can go energy cell dot. Uh, oh, I need, I need member variables. I didn't, because oh, these are private. If I made them public, but we'll, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do it probably. Get speed multiplier. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do a set, obviously, because I don't care about setting them. Um, now, you probably see online, loads of people will just do this public. Now, you could probably in this situation. But... Um, right, there we go. And I need to make this public. I still can't access them. 
Right, there we go. So I've made two, all it is is a script with two parameters and then two returns. There's no need to do a set because I'm, in no way am I ever going to want to set one in code. Like that's not how it would work. Maybe I could in some weird situation, but I very much doubt it. Right, get speed multiplier and then energy cell dot get uh, upgrade time. Is that what I called it? Say, so, why is it not? Uh, oh, I did the uh, capital E, which is the class name, not the actual instantiated version of the class that we've stolen here. And I've called it Enery Cell. Little tip. Okay, lots of kids didn't know this. If you right click and do rename, you could go in there and type energy and it will rename all the ones for you. Why? No need to worry about going through your code and renaming stuff. It's great that, by the way. Um, anyway, so let's just recap. This will work. Let's just show it working and then recap. So remember, this one in front is humongously fast. And this one, so if I turn around, this one is massively fast for three seconds. Now, that's annoying because now I've got to, I'm going to run out of speed. I have to fly back. Oh, God. Anyway, so we get in here and then bang. And then this one is double speed for five seconds. And then we go back to normal. So you can see now that I've added the ability to create um, for a script, the ability for these to do different things. Now I could make it so that when an energy cell is created, it has a range or something and it just randomly generates that. So instead of setting them here, I could have a start. I could actually have like, I could actually have like a min and max Private flow, min speed multiplier, it's two. I'm not going to bother with the time. I'm just going to show you one. Max speed multiplier equals four. And then on the start, I could do um, speed multiplier equal, equals random dot range. Um, I mean, comma max, and then of course that would mean that they'd be random between whatever values I set in here. Um, but this speed multiplier here would be changed between two and four now if I run it. So there you go, three point eight, and the other one is three point four two. There you go. So you could do that. I mean, I'm just not saying. I'm not really worried about that. That's the main bit I've got about this. So I'm going to stop the video there because I don't want all these videos to be absolutely massive. So I'm just going to have this one collecting and then I'm going to do the next one as shooting uh, and then obviously we'll put an enemy in that one to die and then we'll look at effects and other things. Maybe look at sound in a different one as well. Okay.